All right, today we're going to be doing an install on an E92 M3. Uh, this uh, will be uh, the same as any E90 or um, any E90 series M3 from 2008 to 2013. A lot of this carries over to some of our other systems. Um, so I'm going to show you right now um, what we're going to have to do. Uh, so the first things uh, you're going to need are going to be a 10 millimeter um, for these bolts here. And then a 6 millimeter or a flathead um, for these screws right here. Alright, so we're going to remove this tube. Some people are good enough to get this all out in one piece, but we're just going to go ahead and loosen both of these. Make it a little easier for us. And the next thing you have to do is you have to come and grab this hose and where you see these ribs here you just there's one on the top and one on the bottom which you're not gonna be able to see but you just squeeze those and pull off that's that simple so this is the the piece off of the uh, intake already but as you squeeze it releases those that hold it on like that so that's how that works all right, next we're gonna do is take out these 10 millimeter bolts. This can be done first, but either way, it's all gotta get disconnected. All right, on this car, uh, some of these pieces are already broken. Um, that's not too uncommon, you'll find that. But in either case, um, we need to do, these are T20 Torx on here. Um, we need to undo, there's one on each side. Now that we got all our fasteners out here, depending on this car is also missing these, you might need to remove uh, the fasteners in this corner here. You can remove uh, this uh, piece here. Then you can come over here and you can remove this piece out of your way, set it aside. And now that you've gotten your hose loose and your bolts out there, this whole piece can be lifted out. Sometimes removing the hose helps a little bit. Don't drop the hose clamp like I just did. This whole box will come right out. All right, this is your fuel line here. And on this car, uh, it's actually missing the little plastic retainer here. Um, but what you normally have is you'll have a black, white, or tannish, depending on how messed up it is from being in the engine bay for so long, a uh, piece here, a collar. And there'll be a locking retainer that slides over the top of it, and it's kind of like a C-shape. So you pop that C-shaped retainer off of the plastic collar, and then you would push the collar into the fuel line. And to do that, unfortunately, it's not all here to show you, but what you would do is you would push the fuel line in towards the hard line, push the plastic collar in towards this coupler, and that plastic collar is actually the factory release tool. So you just push in, and then it would slide off just like this. And then you're going to take your fuel line, and you're just going to bring it forward like this over here. All right, now that we've got our fuel line disconnected, what we're going to do is we're going to take our fuel line that comes in the system, and we're going to plug this into uh, the hard line. And there's a couple different ways of doing this. So it can be routed back behind here. Uh, the only you know issue with that is your wiring does go back there too, so it can make things a little bit tighter. Um, also, your throttle bodies are back there, um, but it's usually not that big a deal. But this gets routed around. It just slides right around. Move my arm so you can see a little better. But you get this. I'm going to slide it on. So you can see there's the little the end of the hard line. And you'll hear the click, and that is clicked and locked in place. And now our, our, our next step now that we have the new fuel line connected to the body of the car over there, as we showed before, is we're going to install our fuel sensor. So the fuel sensor will just plug right into the fuel line. And it did click. I don't know if you heard that, but it'll click and lock in and pull on it and make sure it's good. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get your fuel fitting that's supplied in the system. This will clip onto the sensor, 
You'll hear the click as well. And then what you can do is take the factory line and it will plug right back onto our fuel fitting. And now you're good to go. All right, now we're going to install our wiring harness. So on these clips, on pretty much all the BMWs that we do, uh, there's a little metal retainer around here. You don't need to do anything with that. They don't need to come off. Don't take them off. You'll lose them or break the connector. Um, all these do is they simply, this is like a T, like a, it's basically like a built-in tool on the harness here. You can put one finger on one side and the other finger around the other and just pull straight back and they pop off just like that and they'll rotate on here. So there's no need to remove that metal clip. Uh, they're not made to come off on these on this style. So you're going to go around to each um, each injector and they just pull off. Some are going to be a little harder than others. It's just heat cycles and you know these cars you know are now you know approaching 10 years old some of them so um, that's a long time for plastic so as always be careful uh, when you're doing this um, just because of the age of them um, but that's what you're basically going to do and I'll demonstrate it again just so everyone can see I'll do this one's real easy to see um, I'll even put it back on so how you do these to get them back on is you just line them up and you literally just push and you'll hear the click. That's it, that's on, straight back, that's off. All right, one of the trickier parts of this installation is the third injector back on each bank. I'm gonna show you a little tool, um, kind of a trick, not sure if I necessarily recommend it, but uh, this is a hose pick and I uh, found it works really well as long as the plastic's not super brittle. If you have brittle plastic, you're gonna break stuff. So don't break stuff. So you can come in right here and you can just grab on the top in between the two metal uh, retainers and just push straight back. And I found that it'll pop right off, just like that. All right, I'm just trying to explain that hook method a little better. So I don't use it on these because they're very easy to get out, but on the third one back, so one, two, the third one way back up in there. So what I'm doing with this hook is I'm just taking the point of it and putting it right in the center here. And this angle isn't quite right, but I'm just pulling that straight back. And that typically gets that third one to release really easily. All right, uh, we're on the other side of the motor now. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna release the uh, clips from all the fuel injectors. So we're just gonna grab that T piece, pull back, it'll unclip. Do the same thing for all four on this side till your harness is loose. All right, so now we've got everything disconnected, you can grab your harness uh, and start getting it laid out. Your longer leads are gonna go over towards the driver's side of the vehicle and also your fuel sensor uh, plug that's gonna plug into the fuel sensor. And uh, your shorter lead's gonna come to the passenger side as well as your, uh, your ground lead. Now that your harness is, this is disconnected completely, um, you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your longest lead and follow this all the way back to the back injector underneath your fuel line behind here. Alright, we're going to show you how to connect your harness now. And on some of these, like if you have a supercharger and it's got aftermarket injectors, I'm just going to go ahead and show you uh, sometimes we see that you'll need to rotate the injector a ways to get the plug on all the way and then it'll snap in like that and then you can rotate it back into place uh, once it's snapped in and then you're going to go ahead and take your uh, your male end here and it'll plug right into the factory harness clip together like that and then you're going to tidy up all your wiring you know however you like to make it look uh, really good and you'll do the same thing on both sides all right now that you've got all your uh, injector wiring hooked up and you have your uh, fuel sensor in and your fuel line in and everything we're gonna plug our harness into our fuel sensor all right all right now that you've got all your injectors plugged back in and you've got your fuel sensor plugged in we're gonna route this wiring underneath where your air intake would go and we're going to route it behind the oil filter and that'll keep it you know off of the belts there 
And you can route this side down the same along this bracket and down here. And then what we're gonna do, here's our main plug, which we're gonna mount down here underneath our power steering reservoir behind the headlight. So our ground wire here is going to run underneath the coolant reservoir and up here to this to the ground stud here. All right, now that we've routed our ground wire underneath our coolant tank, uh, you're gonna use this ground here. It's shared by the DME, which is really important. We need a really good ground. And it's good to have that same communication point as the DME too, so there's no time differentiation. This is a, also a 10 millimeter, just like on the air box, so. And we'll just put our nut on just like this and tighten it up. And obviously wrap your wire, make sure it's not you know, touching the header or anything else that's gonna rub it or burn it or melt it or short it out or anything like that. So. All right, now that you've got your system installed, just go ahead and put on the components you took off back in, like your air box here. We'll drop into place mostly. You gotta make sure the uh, air intake lines up on the bottom um, and then your front pieces as well.